Here are five things you need to know when booking a budget wedding photographer. Number one, what is a budget wedding photographer? Prices vary anything from free to build a portfolio all the way up to £20,000 and above. So your budget photographer might not be the same as somebody else's budget photographer. In this instance, I'm talking about people circa up to the £500 range. And this is five things you need to know and look out for when booking a budget wedding photographer. Number one, consistency in work. Does their work look consistent across a couple of different weddings if they have the examples to look at? You might like the style of one wedding that they've done. They may come and photograph your wedding. They may put it in a completely different style, which won't be what you expected to get. So have a look at their work, look for consistency. That'll also demonstrate their ability to repeat good work or work to a standard that you're happy with for your wedding. Number two, how many cameras do they use on a wedding day? And it might seem like a silly one, but even if you're, it's a budget photographer, you'd want them to carry at least two cameras on them. Whether they only use one or not, doesn't really matter. The second camera's there in case there's an issue with the first camera. Let's say you've paid your budget wedding photographer to come and uh, photograph your wedding. Um, halfway through the ceremony, one of the cameras breaks, malfunctions, dies. Where are you left if they don't have a backup camera? Just half a ceremony, none of the ceremony, what do you do? So ideally, you want them to have two cameras so that they can always have a plan B should plan A break. The third thing you should look at is other photographers out there. There is a huge discrepancy between people that will charge £300, £400 for really, really good work because they're undervaluing themselves or they're on the way up and they've got a natural talent. And then there's people that charge three, four hundred pounds for their work, and really, it's not even worth three, four hundred pounds. You'd be better off giving the camera to one of the kids and asking them to take some pictures through the day. So, have a good shop around. Make sure you look at lots of different things and lots of different people. Speak to as many people as you need to. I'd recommend having conversations with at least five or six different people and looking over these points we've spoke about: consistency, in quality backup cameras, plan plan A, plan B, and again, what are you getting for your money? Thing number four, item number four to check, is the work they're showing you actually their work. I live in quite a small village, um, and I've seen other photographers advertising wedding photography packages that have been very, very, very well priced. But I've also looked at some of the pictures that they've shown as examples of their work, and thought, hang on a minute, I live in England, not California. That looks a little bit too sunshine and sand. I've done a reverse Google image search, and if you don't know how to do that, just hit me up in the comments and I'll show you how to do it, tell you how to do it. But a reversed Google image search, you put the image into Google and it tells you all the places that picture shows up. And funnily enough, the local photographer in the small village actually was using images from a second, a different photographer was actually using images from another photographer who lived out in California somewhere, who, uh, who had a big following and, and quite a hefty price tag to the images. So double check that the pictures that you're seeing are a true representation of their work. Do your due diligence. Make sure you're not paying four or 500 pound looking at images that look like they cost thousands and finding out on the day that actually it was too good to be true. And the fifth thing, is to, then the fifth thing, once you've settled on a photographer at this kind of end of the market, and again, I just wanna, maybe should have said this at the start, there's nothing wrong with this end of the market at all. There's some cracking people. I sat at that end of the market for some time. I still dip into that sort of that end of the market sometimes for, for, for local people, friends, families, that sort of thing. But once you've settled on a photographer, work with them for a game plan. Things will be relatively new to them. The day will be chaotic for you and for them have a bit of a plan in place. Make sure you write lists of who you want photographing because the day will come and your auntie or your uncle will be off at the bar getting a drink. You'll be going through all your photos. Before you know it, the photographer's moved on to something else. The crowd's dispersed. Your auntie and uncle were missed. The pictures that you wanted so dearly or your nan and granddad or whoever it might have been. So write a list of what you want to get photographed on the day. Give them on a bit of paper, an email, something that they've got in their hand so they can tick it off and make sure they capture everything that you want them to capture on your day. And that's it. 
nice and quick and short. If you've got any questions or anything you'd like to know, drop me a message below. I'm going to follow this up with it, what to look for when spending a bit more money on a photographer and what you might get as peace of mind for spending a little bit more money on a photographer. So if you'd like to see that, make sure you subscribe, like, follow, notification bell, all that jazz. And next time we'll talk about what you get when you spend a little bit more on a photographer on your wedding day. Thank you very much.